everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you some cards that I made. I was in the need for a birthday card, a, um, well actually a couple of graduation cards, and of course a Mother's Day card or two. And so I decided to play around with some intuitive painting to make a background and then make that into cards. So these would be mixed media cards because I'm going to use a lot of different products. Um, and mix them around, some collage, some some paint, some mark making, you know, that type of stuff. What is intuitive painting? It is the creative practice that releases impulses usually corralled by the logical part of the brain to make a work of art. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. People who use this technique employ their intuition to paint automatically without stopping to plan for the outcome of their piece. Basically, it means to just paint without thinking, to just play with color. Um, how I did this, I picked some colors of Dilution's paints that I thought went well together. And then I threw in a, a metallic and a neutral, and I've also got some white gesso. Um, I started out with a 9 by 12 inch, 140 pound watercolor paper. And this is a cold press. And I'm just without thought, without planning, I'm not, I'm not sitting there looking at the paper and saying, okay, I'm going to draw an elephant. Or, okay, this painting is going to come out as a bird on a branch. That's not, that's not what intuitive painting is at all. It's just, just thoughtlessly allowing your creative side of your brain to apply color, apply pattern, make marks, um, blend things, get your hands in there, get it dirty, use brushes, use fingers, use mark making tools and just do it until it makes you happy. This is a really hard process for some people <laughs> because we logically when we're trying to create want to create a thing. We have an idea in mind even even in like you know my favorite thing is to do challenges where there's a prompt set and you follow the prompt set even in that case I can sometimes corral those prompts into making something that I had in mind or I was inspired by a thing and I want to to allow this art that I'm creating to show what I was inspired by Sometimes with abstract art, that's really hard. But even so, most abstract artists are thinking to themselves, I saw this beautiful sunset or um, this fish was jumping out of a pond and they get an idea of colors and shapes and movement and they want to create this art that's giving the impression of how that made them feel. Maybe it's music, maybe they heard music or something. You know what I'm saying? You usually, as an artist, have an idea. Whereas with intuitive painting, you don't have an idea of something you are creating because of creating, because it's fun, because it's relaxing, because it frees your creativity to just, just do it. You know, like Nike says, just do it. That's basically it right there. So um, it's, it's something that is a good tool if you are um, trying to get your mojo back or if you are trying some pain management or some some uh, ways to get over some grief or to work out some things in your head that um, are causing you to be blocked up you know uh, just get the paint get the paper get the collage get, get out some stuff that you like that you know the colors that you like and and uh, shapes that you like and just throw them at the paper so that's what I'm doing. It, I'm, I'm doing this because I'm going to make it into cards. I already know that. But I'm not making a thing. I'm just making prettiness, what I consider pretty. I'm using shapes that I like, like circles and scallops and uh, zigzags. So what did I do? I started out with acrylic paint, dried that up. Then I put on some neutral colors on top of that. To kind of break up the space, um, a white gesso and a titanium buff uh, acrylic paint. And while that was still wet, I scribbled into it 
with the back of my paintbrush to scrape through some of that white to bring out colors from underneath. That's always fun. And then now I just uh, grabbed some different papers that I liked. Um, ones that coordinated with the colors kind of and then this green one had some it was a you know when you use a stencil you go to clean it off you just put it down on a piece of deli paper and then that, that kind of helps some of the the paint get off that's what I did anyway sometimes people put them in a in a journal um, to just you know start making uh, marks on their blank paper and then later that use that they use that journal that has all those colors and leftover paints and patterns in it to start other pages. Um, I just usually do it on deli paper because I use a lot of deli paper for collage. So I have just some scraps basically. I still haven't cleaned up my studio. There's paper all over the floor. <laughs> That's, you know, I just grabbed some things and I grabbed a, a piece of book text um, out of a old paperback I just tore a page out and then just these little pieces of paper that were on the floor or in a basket or something I didn't think too hard about that either I just grabbed the ones that I liked the patterning or the color and then I cut them into shapes um, I've got some circles I've got some rectangles and then some of them are just torn shapes you know torn shapes are more organic so it's fun to combine something that's cut with something that's torn because you get that juxtaposition of the two textures so I've got a little bit of both and I'm just I'm attaching them using Liquitex um, fluid medium and a brush not thinking too much like more kind of the thinking of oh well there's a spot there that I think need something and I just put something <laughs> it's it's hard to describe the process but it is a process and it's something that everyone should try I, I suggest you all you know give it a try see what comes up if you don't like it you just keep messing with it until you do like it and then at some point you'll have a background and if you want to um, you can make it into something at that point you can do some uh, like you know make a drawing over it and then maybe paint out some of the background to make your drawing come forward uh, a lot of mixed media artists do it this way so it's fun I was having fun now I've got out some mark making tools I used some of that coffee colored paint it looks black in the video but it's a really really dark brown um, I use that with some bubble wrap and then I've got a couple different little tubes a smaller one and a larger one and I use some of the fuchsia paint this is a uh, like a foamy thing that I got I don't even know where it's from but it's a square so it makes nice perfectly square marks so I use the dirty martini color for that and then finally I think I'm gonna get out some white gesso and another one of the tubes um, that one's probably my favorite because it has a thick edge makes a really nice mark I like it so I use that one quite a bit um, these are just things that are sitting down on my desk that I mess around with occasionally to make marks because it's fun so then of course uh, I take the very end of a makeup sponge and make some little line like hash mark type lines that was one was fun I don't think I've ever done that mark making before but I saw how thin it was at the end of the cosmetic sponge and I thought that would make a nice little mark so I used some gesso that I was making the circles with and did it with the sponge then there's some pretty gloppy places so here I'm just kind of um, cleaning up and you can see some of it got on my hand uh, I know I'm gonna need to dry all this eventually and I don't want to wait all day for it to dry so I wanted to just kind of sop up some of the gloppiness and then I got out the copper paint which a black a gray a white those things are neutrals so you can always throw those colors in I think also that silver gold and copper are neutrals 
and platinum or whatever metallics. I, I consider them neutrals as well. So I'm using this neutral copper color to kind of use my finger and just fill in and define some places. Just because I like copper. <laughs> So some, some other things are getting covered up. There's always, you know, things that are getting covered up, things that are coming forward, things that are going backwards, just um, the way you feel like doing it. And then the last step is usually doodling. And so I've got out some Posca pins, my black and white Posca pins, and I'm just, just sloppily, quickly, without any type of pressure on myself to make perfect marks. I'm just making some dots, making some little petals around some of the things to make them look like flowers, um, filling in areas with dots, making lines, just complete and random doodle fun. <laughs> Maybe tracing around some of the edges and then I also throw a little splatter on there with uh, the pin because when you shake those pins they'll they'll splatter for you. And then I did the same thing with the white. Probably my most satisfying thing that I did with the white was to make circles around some of those bubble wrap marks. I just, I enjoyed that. <laughs> make white circles around them. That was fun. I don't know. It's, it's, this is a very enjoyable, very enjoyable process. Very relaxing. So this is pretty much done. I cut it into some four by five and a quarter pieces and now I'm going to start making some cards. So in this video you'll see, you, you will see three. I still have a another panel plus a couple cut off the sides that I can make a couple more cards with. Um, I didn't want the video to get too long. So on this first one I picked the piece, the panel that didn't have any flowers on it because this card is for a male and I don't think that um, a big floral bunch of stuff is probably really what he would enjoy. So I cut down the panel a little bit smaller and then I used a copper metallic panel underneath it and then now I'm just making a wiggly line around the edge for another dimension. And because because of the colors that I chose, I chose um, brown cardstock and I chose the panel that didn't have flowers. That one looks more masculine than um, the next one I'm going to do, which is for a female person who's having a birthday. And so I picked the bright pink cardstock and then I am just sponging around the edges to kind of close off the border on that because I'm not going to put another layer underneath it. And then I tore one edge and took a piece of turquoise teal colored cardstock and tore the edge of that and tucked it under so now it has kind of a little partial um, layer there with an extra torn edge to em emphasize the torn edge. And then on this one I'm going to add some ribbons because um, it's for a girl. So ribbons. I guess I'll make my phone stop going bling. <laughs> Those ladies are talking. They're going bling. Um, so I started out with the uh, pink organza and then added in some teal, I don't know what kind of ribbon this is. It's kind of like an organza, but it has wire in it. And then I'm getting out my paper flowers. I'm going to put a paper flower there. And it has a little bit of, um, uh, text on it. The paper flower does. So it kind of coordinates with the background, which has a few little bits of text paper on it. And then the next one, um, it's Mother's Day coming up, so I'm going to make this one into a Mother's Day card. And my mother likes butterflies. She has all kinds of butterfly stuff. And I had this napkin laying around, um, probably from Happy Mail, that had a teal colored butterfly. And since there was teal in the background, I went ahead and got the butterfly to put on there. I'm going to... Um, collage that on there. And again, just using the liquid or the fluid matte medium from Liquitex. And because I use the titanium buff in the background as well as white, 
this goes ahead and blends in. Otherwise, you would see that off-white edge and think, oh, that doesn't match. <laughs> but it's fine because of the, um, the titanium buff. Then I got out some different stamps to make greetings on my cards. Um, the first one, I was going to use the Happy Birthday stamp, but then I decided instead to use the Tim Holtz chat stickers. There's one that says Happy Birthday to you, and because of the text in the background, you know, the kind of typing text, and then also the same type of text on the flower, <clears throat> I thought this matched better. So I put the sticker on there and then just outlined it with the black pen to make it stand out a little bit more. Then for the graduation card, I got out one that says congratulations and um, putting that on some off-white cardstock and then backing it with that same copper cardstock and that one's finished. And then once uh, my butterfly was dry, it kind of looked dull in comparison to the background because I had used some fairly intense colors from the Dilutions paints in the background so I'm gonna to have to figure out some way to you know pump that up a little bit and make it stand out more so the first thing I did was to use my black Posca pen and draw around it to make sure that it had real firm clear edges around the whole butterfly and then I'm gonna get out some glitter glue and I'm looking at the different ones to see which one has the most teal colors in it you know these iridescent um, glitters can really shine teal but some of them are more pink and some of them are more teal and I'm not sure why that's just the way it is so I looked at some different ones and brought out the one that I thought would really reflect the teal colors and then I'm just uh, drawing around all the little cells on the butterfly's wings and just basically covering the wings with glitter and that makes it stand out a lot more but the Happy Mother's Day is not going to work on there because it's too big and it'll cover up too much of the butterfly so I ended up using a different stamp. So if you've enjoyed this video please remember to uh, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notifications. Like and leave me a comment. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.